What's up? What's going on, everybody? My name is Owen Lutz. I have the unique pleasure of offering up all of my best information for you in 20 minutes. So I'm going to try and get into it real quick and not mess around too much. My name is Owen Lutz. I am the founder of cleaningleadsfast.com. I have a Facebook group, Cleaning Company Owners, How to Market Your Maid Service, um, and a bunch of other really cool ways of helping residential cleaning companies. I own my own cleaning company that we're uh, just got our LLC back after three years after I sold off the book of business a couple years ago. Um, just got tons of cheap leads coming in online. So we figured well, let's capitalize on it and, and relaunch our old business. Got a sweet new hire. I digress. Thank you for joining me. Let's rock and roll. I'm here today to talk about how to market your, uh, how to advertise your maid service, right? We're going to be talking about the anatomy of a sales funnel. So this is something that I can imagine is uh, you've heard enough about it. It's a little bit intimidating to even really think about um, the anatomy of a sales funnel. So people always think about uh, maybe click funnels, the software where you can build sales funnels or a million different things. But the fact is every single business, every sale is the result of a sales funnel, no matter how well it's put together or not. Um, so uh, in order to get more sales, you need to improve your sales funnel all the time. So um, a lot of people are going to say you need to, like you need a new sales funnel, but the reality is you have one, you just need to work on the one you've got. So I want to tell you guys kind of my seven steps uh, for building out and running a successful sales funnel. First things first, it's all about your DCA. So we've got kind of two preliminary phases. We'll talk about them uh, kind of one at a time here. But first is the dream client avatar. So we're going to go ahead and name ours uh, Susanna. We'll call her Susanna Rose, named after my little um, nine-day-old niece. Um, the DCA, your dream client avatar, is... Um, a result of your research into who are your best customers. So we're going to go off to the side here and talk for a second about uh, Pareto's principle, or um, some people call it Pareto's law, or you may also know it as the 80-20 uh, the rule. So this idea is that 80% uh, of your outcomes are stemming from just 20% of your efforts. Um, so you can think of that in kind of a ton of different ways. Uh, initially, like 80% of what you achieve in your business only is going to stem from 20% of your time spent on your business. So like 80% of your money is going to only is going to come from just 20% of your uh, time that you're working on the business or your activities in the business, like personally as a business owner. Um, Right. So to think about that, you know, 80, that means 80% of your clients and 80% of your, let's say, you know, joy and profit, because that's why we're really in the business is we want to be happy and we want money. Uh, so 80% of your joy and profit is going to come from just 20% of your customers. I bet that's true. If you went and look at who are your best customers that make you happy, that don't cause any problems, you get, they pay you the most money. So they're bringing in, bringing in the cash and they don't have any like real big negative things that are stopping you. Like, um, cost of doing business, like having to go back to their house to fix things or like the the happy customers that pay you the most. I bet that's about 20% if you did the math. Um, so to focus then on those 20%, and then to create your dream client avatar, which is taking those people and uh, creating, you know, your one person who you know is kind of the dream persona of all of those people. So take those people, do some research, ask them, why do you pay me? Why do you care so much? How are you so awesome? Spend the time to really get to know them. I've got a whole thing on this in my Facebook group, which I'll tell you about in a minute, where you can learn a little bit more about how to really build that thing out. But for now, I want you to know that if you go into the 20% of your customers that are bringing you 80% of your joy and profit, that is going to be where you're going to build your dream client avatar. And that is the first step in a sales funnel is to know who you are marketing to, right? So, First, that's the first step. Once we have our dream client avatar, the reality is um, that of the people that are going to read our advertisements and the people who are going to engage with your marketing material, 
um, only one out of five of those people or 20% of them are going to be similar to your dream client here, right? Only one out of these 10 or two out of these 10, you know, are going to be the best fit. They're going to match. They're going to be very similar to um, Susanna Rose, right? So then the next step, uh, once you've decided who your dream client avatar is, we're going to then focus on communicating with her so that these people that are most similar to your best customers are going to be the ones that jump up here and decide to fall into our sales funnel, which, you know, and then down here, this is where the money's at. That's where we're trying to get to. Um, so step two is all about awareness. So speaking to people based on what awareness they have of your business. So there is... Um, a whole awareness continuum that goes from unaware to um, maybe they're aware of the problem and then eventually they'll be aware of the solution to the problem and then eventually they'll be aware of your unique service or product. Um, we'll go with service and then they will be totally aware of your offer and how they can um, you know, we'll go offer aware, right? Um, so that's what we're going to be focused on is focusing on who the, the people that are reading your material. Are they completely unaware of who you are, what problems, all this other stuff? Or are they aware of the problem? Are they already aware of the solution, which is going to be like recurring house cleaning services? Or are they going to be aware of your specific service, which is your description or your way of describing your house cleaning service? And then there's the offer, which is what you'll give them or what they will pay and get back for um, in exchange for cleaning services, right? So that is all, those are both kind of preliminary things. You need to think about this and you need to know who it is you're talking to and where, what their awareness is before you build any new marketing material, right? So then your marketing material is gonna start here with number three. This is gonna be all relevant preframes. So a pre-frame is to intentionally get someone into the right frame of mind before you give them a call to action, right? So if you say, run a boosted Facebook post that says, uh, we are a cleaning company, click here to request a quote. The, if people do come through that, which some people will, the people who come through that, the leads that you get are going to give you a um, price-based conversation. They're going to say, uh, I, your cleaning service, uh, what's the price? Oh, that's too much for me. Can we lower the price? Because that's the only pre-frame they've gotten is request a quote. You know, we're a cleaning service, request a quote. We want you to pay us for stuff, request a quote, right? So you need to give them a relevant pre-frame. If they've never heard about you, you need to talk about problems and solutions. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about this in just one second. Um, but your focus is always going to be on problems and solutions, not your not your service yet, right? So then the next option here is, or the next phase of the funnel is after a relevant preframe, you want to collect that data, right? So their name, phone number, and email. Um, that's like always the next thing. Cause once you have that contact information, you can then send them emails or you can, that's my little email, or you can, uh, you know, retarget them with ads, or you can give them a phone call to do all the other things you can to um, get those people to move through the next few phases of the funnel. Um, so once you've collected that information, then the next step, you need to identify the buyers. So you want to find out, uh, yeah, you want to identify buyers. I kept the eye in there. I thought that was cute. Um, once you identify the buyers, those are going to be people who are going to give you money uh, right away. So once you've collected their information, you need to have some kind of offer where you can say, you know, limited time special, uh, pay us $99 for two hours of cleaning, and you'll also get $300 in uh, like recurring bonuses or something like that, right? Um, so give them some kind of offer to collect that information. So you can do that on uh, the sales page right away, or at least at least have a call to action on the thank you page. So you want to get a call to action on the thank you page that says something along the lines of that's a CTA. Thank you. Thank you. CTA. Thank you. You get it. Um, by doing that, uh, 
call to action on the thank you page and say, call now and we'll give you this added bonus will at least help you get them on the phone so that you can identify those buyers uh, faster. If you're not going to be accepting payment online, at least get them on the phone right away to identify those buyers as fast as you can, because some portion of these people are going to uh, give you money right away. And then after that, you want to upsell, right? So then as soon as you have somebody who gives you their credit card information, then the very next question, it's just one question, um, is going to be amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, also, right now, we've got another little special for you. Uh, do you want to add on this other service for this much money? And stop talking. It's just one question you have to ask that is going to make you way more money because some percentage of those dream client avatars that went through your awareness continuum, they got relevant information, they understand that you have problems and solutions you're going to be offering that they can that will help them based on you know where they're at. You collect their information first, you added them to an email list, we got them on a retargeting list, and we got them on a phone call list, we can start calling them, we identify who the buyers are, some percentage of those people are going to give you more money if you were to ask for it. So then you could say, would you like our, you know, super package, which is like an upgrade to not only are we going to come by, but we're going to bring the sense that you like the most. We're going to bring you fresh cookies every time. We're going to, you know, clean your car when we're there, something, some added bonus of like more service for more money um, will was just something huge right there that you can always offer them. And the last phase here is the referral stage. So this one is super important because once they have um, paid you for all that good stuff, you want to really be able to bring in those referrals and have those uh, customers bring in more customers. Let's see how we doing on time here. Wonderful. Um, so that is our seven phases of a sales funnel. But in your sales funnel, there's going to be little holes everywhere, right? So you've got um, you know two holes here. You got another hole over here another hole down here, um, another hole over here. All of these little places, there are people that are just falling out of your sales funnel. And this guy's here thinking, ah, right? So are all the rest of them. They're all freaking out. They're all getting, getting just launched out of the sales funnel and disappearing into the void unless you can intelligently set up cute little retargeting buckets. Um, seriously, I think this is like one of the most important things in, uh, advertising in 2020 is to be able to retarget people based on where they're at. So let's say this dude just fell out of a little bucket here. He landed into a retargeting bucket and we can go into, uh, business.facebook.com and you can then figure out a way you'll get to the place where you can create an audience and it'll, uh, after you do like the whole business setup. And once you create an audience, you can create an audience of video views. Uh, so you do a custom audience, custom audience, and you can make a custom audience that is based on video views. That's two V's there. One V, two V, video views. So this is people that have watched some of your pre-frame content because your pre-frame content can be articles that you've written. They can be um, videos that you do of you talking with your customers or you just talking about your business. Um, video is probably going to be a big time winner. So think about that a bunch, try and make videos, um, get better and better at it. And you're not going to be perfect right away, but this can be a retargeting view bucket. So then all the people that go in here, um, you can retarget people by creating a custom audience. And then that custom audience, you can bring back through to the top of your funnel. And you can then again, speak to those people in this specific campaign, right? So this is a, now a marketing campaign is retargeting people that do the video views and you're bringing those people back into whether it's their uh, problem aware. So if they've already watched one of these videos, they're probably problem aware so that you can bring them through the solutions portion of conversation of saying, Hey, you know, we know that you had this problem that you've already agreed, like this is a problem. And you know that recurring house pain could be the best solution for you. I want to tell you a little about, you know, our service. And then you bring them in and say, enter your information. Let me uh, request a quote and we will give you this amazing service, whatever, yada, yada. Um, same thing over here on the collect data phase. There's two places where they could fall off. They fall off and they um, don't 
ever see you again, but you've got now the page views. So this guy has fallen into this bucket and we can make this one a page view audience. So this is, you can do the same thing, go to business.facebook.com, create an audience, but you can do it based on people who viewed a certain website. Um, really cool stuff there as well. But then you also have right here, your email list. So now that you've gotten their information, you can then have all, your emails now should be always bringing people back into your uh, funnel based on your conversation with those people, right? So talking about solutions and problems and speaking to their awareness. Same thing, once you've identified buyers, some of those people aren't gonna take the upsell. So then you've got this bucket of people that have given you money that you can now go back to, give them another call that says, hey, we noticed that we've been cleaning your house and our girl said that you might need actually really benefit from our super package where we clean your car and we'll, you know, take your clean, get your dog washed, whatever it is that you have as an upsell. Um, you can then take those people from this bucket and you can bring them back to the upsell. And then the people that took the upsell and were customers for your, of yours for a while, you can then say, are you happy? dollar sign eyeballs from happy customers. Um, if so, here is our referral program to bring in more customers. So that is our seven steps of a sales funnel. I think I just about crushed it in 17 minutes or so. Um, man, I wish this was live so I could get you guys to answer some questions for me. But that's a lot of really great material. I'm telling you guys, the, the thing that's gonna make this work is when you focus in on Pareto's law. I'm telling you, hands down, once you understand the 80-20 rule and how 80% of your joy and profits is coming from 20% of your customers, and then you build this dream client avatar, which is a, you know, it's like a worksheet, basically, where you can then go back and say, um, and ask yourself the question, would this marketing piece, would this email, would this video that I'm making, would any of this, would this marketing material excite Susanna Rose? That's the real question. You have your dream client avatar, which is just a way of thinking about who it is you're speaking to in your marketing material so that you can go back and really build on um, speaking to the right people. So in order to do this, um, the most important thing is interviews with your current customers. Build up a list of questions. Say, hey, I've got, you know, four or five questions for you. Um, you know, why did you hire us? Um, what's your, you know, favorite thing about us? You know, talk to them about what types of, like, where did you find us? Um, where did you find us? Let's see if I can come up with a couple other good ones while well, I've got, there's another minute here. Um, where did you find us? And, you know, two other good questions that you can use to, build up this dream client avatar so that anytime you're writing your marketing material, you can write it and think about would this marketing material excite Susanna Rose? And you also need to remember that with that question in mind, you now know how to advertise your maid service because the anatomy of the sales funnel is to decide who your dream client avatar is, speak to them based on their current awareness and give them a relevant pre-frame talking about problems or solutions, collect their data by giving some form of offer, whether it's um, a customer satisfaction report um, or uh, requesting a quote, whatever, um, and then identify the buyers right away that needs to be instant. After that, you need to give those people an upsell. As soon as you have their information, you say, I would love to make that offer for you, another one. And then uh, three weeks later, ask them for referrals. And of course, as always, please come join my Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups, cleaning company owners to hang out with me. And who knows, maybe I'll make a few more of these really, really sweet videos. Thank you so much. Have a great day.